history does repeat itself. That famous organization of motion picture uh, publicity men, known as uh, the Wobblers, again presents the world's 13 most talented girls. Each year, this contest just a moment, folks. Here comes one of Hollywood's most successful producers, Herman Klein, president and guiding genius of Superba Pictures. Mr. Klein, won't you please tell the folks about them missing by not attending this banquet? Indigestion. <laughs> folks, uh, Mr. Klein will have his little joke. <laughs> you shouldn't talk like that, Herman. It isn't refined. Can I help it if I'm extensive? But millions of people are listening into that microphone. Why didn't you tell me that? Oh, good evening, Mrs. Klein. <laughs> How to do, everybody? If it's a superb picture, it's a... Uh, <clears throat> it's a superb picture. I am the president, Herman Klein. I'm much obliged. Check up on those clouds. Buzz out and get a cameraman, and after that, you... Good Bob. I only got one pair of feet. That's all Napoleon had, or Caesar, or Alexander the Great. So hop on it. You worry about your feet later. All right. Pierre, I want that speaker's table set up right. Put your soul into this, Pierre. It's a big moment. Oh, we wish you best Dick, keep those newspaper men from falling asleep, will you? Right. Burn these over the wires, baby, to Miss June Dale, care of the Wampus, this hotel. Will Rogers, Senator Barr, Wallace Beery, Jimmy Walker, Mary Pickford, Paul Muni, and Mussolini. They sure are a nice bunch of telegrams. They ought to be precious. I wrote them myself. Come on, come on, get the lead out of your who's it. Gee, boy, she's been running me ragged all day. Let me take a breather, will you? Ah, breathe on your day off. Take those music cues with Ted Fiorita. And Sammy, see if all the girls are in the dressing room. Come here, I want to see you. Hi, boss. Hello, Miss Klein. Did you call me, boss? Sure, boss. And as I understand it, you're still working for me, ain't it? Why, certainly, just because I've been a little busy with the wampus, I don't see why you... Busy with the wampus? You know your desk is already covered over with cobwebs? Now, what harm can a few cobwebs do? You let me worry about that, Mr. Klein. Tomorrow at the crack of dawn, I'll be back at the studio giving my all for Superba. You know, I got a good mind to fire you. This time, permanently. Suppose we talk about you for a change, Mrs. Klein. If I may say so, you're looking exceedingly well, and the bloom of youth still lingers in your cheeks. Say, hey, Preston, I pay you to soft soap the public, not my wife. Herman, don't aggravate yourself. Remember, you acidosis. A truer word was never spoken, Mrs. Klein. There's nothing like aggravation to encourage acidosis. Tickets, <laughs> right. please. Get an eye full of these wampus baby scars. I'll guarantee your mind won't be on your stomach. <laughs> I must join the gentlemen of the press. I want to make sure they give Superba Films a plug in tomorrow's paper. Good. Remember, Mr. Klein, the interests of Superba Pictures are always closest to my heart. I go to sleep figuring out new ideas to glorify our product. I wake up in the morning figuring out new ways to spread the name of Superba over the world. Morning, noon, and night at Superba. Pictures with the soap. I'm getting sick of these banquets. Ah, gentlemen. Hello, loudspeaker. Well, what's new at that mech of the arts? The verb of pictures being. Oh, why bother me about that tin type factory? But there's the girl here tonight that's the biggest thing since Garbo. Get a load of her. Her name is June Dale. And take a tip from your Uncle Abner. Keep your eyes on June Dale tonight. Never heard of her. Ah, Bob. but you will. Bob. Boss, one of the girls hasn't shown up yet. We think something's happened to her. Which one is it? I forgot to ask. Don't forget to remind me to punch you in the nose. All right. Two to one, the dizzy dame went to the wrong hotel. All right, save it. Who hasn't shown up? June Dale. June, where's Captain? Captain? Here I am. Did you call the house? No, she left before I did, right after she got your note. My note? I didn't send any note. Maybe something's happened Maybe to her. Maybe she's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Let me get out of right here. Did you see the note? No, but she said it was from Bob. Well, what's your address? One, 138. June Dale's disappeared. No. June Dale's disappeared. 
Get the police. June Dale's been kidnapped. Who's been kidnapped? June Dale, yes. Disappeared. A white satin gown. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry to interrupt, but Miss June Dale, popular Wampus baby star, has disappeared. If there's any hint you can give the police in our citywide search, it will be greatly appreciated. Look, June! June Dale! Where have you been? Oh, it was frightful. Two men jumped into my car. I screamed and, and I fought them, but they, they hit me. Well, what did they look like? Oh, I don't remember. It was so dark and I was so confused. I... I'll leave her alone. Can't you see she's upset? Oh, oh. June, June. And Miss Dale has fainted. And no wonder. There's a way. She had to fight off. There's a way. Oh, there's, there's a way. Come on, there's a way. Sorry, but you never get out of the way, then. Boy, what a story this is. Oh, well, the whole thing is boring. Oh, remember what they look like. You're going to be all right. Do you have any idea who they were? Haven't you any heart? Give her a chance. Get everybody out of here. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here. 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 Get out of <laughs> this is front page stuff, June. You'll have your pretty face in every paper. You'll be in the newsreel with the president, Max Baer, and Amy. Oh, I was scared stiff all through. Oh, you gave a marvelous performance. <laughs> Bernhardt couldn't have done better. Bob, do I have to keep on with these crazy publicity stunts? Of course, it's part of the movie merry-go-round. Stars aren't born, they're made. And it's headlines that make them. You can do anything with a headline. Oh, I'm not underrating you, June. You're a great little trooper. All you need is a break, and your name will be on every marquee from Maine to California. <laughs> you make it sound so easy, but I'm kind of worried. You let me do the worrying, will you? Now, how about turning on a little of that sunshine personality? A little bit tired, aren't you, sweet? <laughs> no, I'll be all right, dear. You need a little stimulant? I was about a little chaser. No time to get tanked up. You have work to do. <laughs> Come on. You girls go on in a few minutes and remember, you don't know what happened. Oh, but June, I don't see how you can go ahead with all this now. Aren't you too upset? Well, I feel, you know, I feel all right, Catherine. <laughs> I wish I did. Well, darling, don't do that. You'll spoil your makeup. I can't help it. It's like, like I'd lived my whole life for this one night. There's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> what if I didn't make good? Oh, don't be silly. 33, that Cape Town? Certainly not. I was Miss Portland, Oregon. Oh, Portland. Keep away from doorknobs, Fanny. How about it, Wampus? Is ready to go? Yes! Well, gather around, Papa. He has some business to tell you. Come on, hurry up. Get around. Good. Now listen, girls. Face this in your turban. You're starting up that rickety ladder to success. As Wampa stars, you're halfway there already. But how far you'll get is up to nobody but your own sweet self. Now go down there tonight and start those producers thinking about contracts. You're on your way. In just a minute, you'll be hearing Ted Fiorito say, this is Ted Fiorito speaking from the banquet given in honor of the Wampa's baby stars. Himself. Why'd you pop your polo for me? Glad to see you, girl. How are you, Bob? Uh, Miss Clayton, Miss, uh, yes. Mr. Mr. Preston. The irrepressible Douglas, surrounded by beauty. Well, what do you think of this year's Wampus selection? Oh. Now, I'll make it simple. Well, uh, conservatively speaking, these 12 girls, handpicked from thousands, are the loveliest, the most gorgeous bunch of kids you've ever seen. Mr. Preston is a publicity man, and he never makes an understatement. Why 12 <laughs> girls? I thought there were 13. Oh, the 13th. Super extra special colossal. That's one of Bob's mild recommendations. <laughs> the name? June Dale. Goodbye. Goodbye. Shall I make a note of that, Gordon? It won't be necessary. I'll remember it. June Dale. Sit down, Sammy. No. Yeah. Well, boss, how are you enjoying our little affair? <clears throat> I know that came straight from the heart. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here in the guise of a fortune teller. 
I see 13 girls. I predict a marvelous, glorious future for them all. And after Don Raymond sings your song, especially written for this occasion, I shall interrupt from time to time. Take it, maestro. star from Hollywood. Miss Dorothy Drake, some more California sunshine. Miss June Dale, as fresh and fair as a day in June. That was a mild recommendation. Miss Lucille Lund, as radiant as a flower from the hills of Washington. Miss Neoma Judge, society's contribution to the art. Miss Betty Bryson, another California flower. Miss Ann Hubby, of the Indiana Hubby. Miss Jean Gale, San Francisco glories in the Golden Gate, and Jean. Miss Hazel Hayes, golden voiced beauty from Paris. Steve the Strong. Kansas. Miss Leonor Keith, fresh breeze from Indianapolis. Miss Catherine Williams, a budding star from Seattle. Miss Lou Ann Meredith, the Southern Peach from Dallas, Texas.
I may not go until after June. Stroke of genius. Ah, uh, you mean a stroke of apoplectic. Every paper in the country is giving her a break. Millions of people already know her name. And in addition to that, she's a natural performer. Beauty, poise, intelligence, everything. I tell you, boss, she can't miss. Say, what's the matter that all at once you got such an interestedness in this girl? Are you in love with her? Mr. Klein, the only reason I'm talking about her is because I have superb films closest to my heart. I don't care what you got next to your heart. She ain't got no box up. That's what you said about Mickey Mouse when I wanted you to tie up Walt Disney. Now listen, I forbid you never to mention that to me again. Anyway, I had a good reason. My wife don't like mice. All right, we'll forget mice. You know how important publicity is, Mr. Klein. There's nothing you can't do with a headline. And this girl is on her way because of headlines. Uh-huh. There you are. Uh, you go ahead. Have one with me. That's good for your stomach. Well, here's mud in your eye. <coughs> Yours too. Both of them. As I was saying, Mr. Klein, I hate to see you, Mr. Day. Say, did you get out the press books on the murdering shadows for revenge? Everything's out, Mr. Klein. Everything's out. Why don't you give this girl a contract? How do I know she can act? What's she done? Where's she from? Never, never mind. Don't tell me. I ain't interested. <clears throat> Hello? What? Who? Yeah, wait a minute. That's for you. On my private telephone, too. Mr. Preston speaking. Oh, put him on. Why, hello, Mr. Hofstangle. Hofstangle. My worst oppositionist. Say, what does he want with you? Why, yes, I represent Miss Dale. Well, that's very interesting. Well, let's say for lunch. Thank you, Mr. Hofstangle. It's all right, Mr. Klein. Let's forget it. Uh, sir, just wait a minute. What does uh, Hofstangle want with Miss Dale? I don't know, but Hofstangle's an man with vision. He's developed some big stars, made millions out of personality. Uh, personality. Fido, the, the dog wonder. Trixie, the queen of wild horses. That fellow that featured a hypnosis, a rhinoceros. A hippopotamus. Well, anyway, last year I made four times as much money as he did. All right, as you say. Uh, say, wait a minute. How much is he offering? I thought you said you weren't interested. Now, don't change the subject. You can't take her over to that loaf of Hofstangle. Where's your dignity? Didn't you tell me you had superb films next to your heart? Yes. Now, listen. Maybe we can get together on a little deal. That's five bucks I owe you, Margie. And believe me, you made a great Mr. Hofstangle. Okay, Bob. Let's try the picture. Hold it. That's got it. going to scream. I wonder what magazine will print this one. It'll probably wind up in Whizbang, dearie. Well, you ought to be thrilled by all this, Catherine. Oh, I suppose so. I don't fancy myself much as being a bathing beauty. I've dreamed of such different things. Like, like Juliet, Edna Gabler, Roxanne. <laughs> oh, all this is so different. Oh, have patience, darling. I spent most of my life preparing for grand opera. Here I am in a bathing suit, too. Hazel, after they see you act, maybe they'll let you sing. Don't you think a highball would help take off the chill? <laughs> no, thank you. I think we've taken too much advantage of your hospitality already. Oh, not nearly enough. I'll tell you something if you promise not to betray my uh, confidence. 
The only reason I permitted Bob to use my pool was to see you. Oh, that's funny. Why so? Well, Bob and I happen to be engaged. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. Hi there, girl. How are you? Hello, Jean. I'm looking for a gal named June. Won't I do? Jean sounds something like June. Not to me. Where's June? Behold. Ah. Hi, Bob. Got heap big news. Big cheap fly and sign contract with Morpheus to have food. Fail face pressing one smart guy. Pretty soon catch him wig warm and lots of more. <laughs> <laughs> Fail face Preston, he's crazy. What is it, Bob? <laughs> oh, Bob, you're marvelous. How did you do it? Believe it or not, a glass of my coffee. <laughs> this is just for one picture, June, but when the producers see you on the screen, they'll all be fighting for you. <laughs> Grand June got a contract. That's so? Uh -huh. Well, I just heard the good news. Congratulations. I know you'll make good. <laughs> Thank you. Were you able to do anything for any of the other girls? Catherine? Leave it to Dynamite Preston. I'll get them something if I have to go on a diet of my <laughs> job. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, June. I know you'll be a big hit. Thanks. I want you to know, June, I'm terribly happy for you. Thank you, Catherine. I know you mean it. Soon I'll be congratulating you. <laughs> okay, girls, okay. Now get dressed. We have to hop over to the Brown Derby and take some publicity still. Well, probably wind up there as waitresses. There might be more money in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, I want to congratulate you, too. Not much of a trick selling a girl like June to anybody. <laughs> oh, I know that. I'm congratulating you on being engaged to a girl like June. Oh, that, huh? You shouldn't tell anybody about us, June. About us? Our engagement is bad. Don't let the public in on the know. Why? Well, we have to make it look as though you're still doing a solo act. It's better publicity. Can't you ever get publicity off your mind? After all, this doesn't mean anything to me unless you and well, I... Well, no, Rice. Wait, I don't mean anything to anybody. And after all, you've got to get around to dances and parties and go out with big shots like Gordon Douglas. Oh, it's swell copy for the columnist. And there's no harm in it. There might be a fact, Bob. Are you trying to arouse the green-eyed monster in me? Fear not, fair gal. Nothing shall kill daredevil Preston's love for thee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob, why don't you be yourself? Forget that you're a press agent and that I'm an actress. Ah, uh, do I know how to forget? Mm, this is much better. Okay, honey. Tonight we go for a nice little ride. No publicity, no pictures, and... I might even talk a bit of baby talk. <laughs> Mr. Preston, sometimes you're almost human. <laughs> that's the Don Juan in me. Mm. And that's not for publication. Oh, you hurt? No, just scared. Boy, what a story. <laughs> opportunity. Now that's really come, I, I don't see how I can go through with it. Catherine, darling, you've got to get hold of yourself. I'm trying so hard to. Listen here. When you're a big star <laughs> and you see your name in light, you're going to look back and laugh at this silly nervousness. Well, I can't help it now. And this means everything I ever worked for. Why, oh, June, if anything had gone wrong, it'd mean I'd have to go home. A failure. Oh, please, darling. Well, I couldn't stand going back like that. I couldn't. They'd all be laughing at me. Salutations. Well, baby, start it. Today's a great day, starting your first picture. How are you feeling, honey? All right. Brace up, Catherine. Your big moment has arrived. Why, Klein himself is coming down to get a good look at you two. Mr. Klein? Why, sure. Give plenty. This is it. Hey, you want on the set, girls? 
Oh, all right. We'll be right down. Couldn't you see the poor girl was nervous enough without you making it any worse by calling your attention to it? Oh, she'll be all right. Now, don't let the camera frighten you, because after this initiation, you'll have it licked. I hope so. But after it's all over, couldn't we go to some quiet place? Just the two of us. Not tonight, honey. I've dated you up. You're to go to the Grove. Douglas is tossing a big party for the gang. Well, aren't you going? No. There's plenty of time for me, honey. Fun. Come on. Get some moves on. What is this? A picture studio or a coffee clock? What's the delay? Let's have some action. Come on, you lugs. Give us some light. Come on, hit him. Put a cell on that 18. Flood that spot. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on. Everybody's standing around. Here yeah, you are, boy. Have a cigarette. <coughs> Thank you. Strike this table. Let's take it. Miss Dale, Miss Williams. Set, please. Darling. You got your line set? Yes, sir. Okay. It's a simple scene. We'll take it. Places. All right, turn him over. Mark it. 106, take one. All right, all right, start your action. If I don't find a job soon, I'm not going to have any shoes left. Can you imagine me looking for work and I bare feet and I... I can't stand living here any longer. I, uh, Cut! Not quite so much tragedy, Miss Williams. We're not doing East Lynn. I'm sorry. That's a great help. Let's try it again. <laughs> you must take it easy. Mark it. 106, take two. 106, take four. 106, take seven. 106, take nine. 106, take ten. If I don't find a job soon, I'm not going to have any shoes left. Can you imagine me looking for work in my bare feet? I can't stand being poor, wearing rags all the time. If I don't find something soon, I'll... 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 Hey, wait a minute now. Stop it. We fooled around enough with these girls. Oh, please, Mr. Klein, give her another chance. Every, everyone's unnerving her. Ten takes is enough chances. This ain't an acting school. Get out. Outside. <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Klein. And you're fired. You're both fired. You heartless fool. You don't give anyone a chance. Standing there criticizing and ridiculing. All of you looking on and, and just daring someone to make good. Kneeling, laughing behind our back. There's nothing human and decent about any that, of you. That's enough. Put her out of the studio here. I'd like to see any one of you put her out. And as for you, Klein, you old windbag, you keep your mouth shut or I'll take out your false teeth and bite you in the back. Preston, you are through. You understand? Fire. For good. Why, you old aseptic, I wouldn't work for you if I had to starve. You've double-crossed everybody, including your own stomach. Local girl gets break in Hollywood. There it is, Hollywood. We've got to get out of here, Bob. Away from all this. Okay, honey. Tomorrow we'll drive to Yuma and get married. Then it's just Mr. and Mrs. Preston against the whole cockeyed world. I won't be afraid. As long as we're together, I don't care what happens. Beginning right now, it's just us. The army with banners. Don't forget that. I won't. In the morning, we'll clear our stuff out of that cheap studio, and then it's just you and me. And the old...
open the road. Come in. Oh, hello, Dick. Is, um, is this on the level? As level as a ruler. But you've been fired before and you never left. I worked plenty hard for that time in Green. All I ever got was abuse. What you could use is a good stiff drink. Uh, why, if it wasn't for me, his junk would still be playing in the sticks. I'd built up all the talent he's got. I'll come back Wednesday when you give this with slides. You'll never get this act again at these prices. Talk about an act! You want to get a load of yourself reading the riot act to his nibs. What do you mean? Well, when the uh, fireworks broke loose yesterday, they kept the cameras running. And your payoff to climb came through like a, a, a second act climax. Well, let me get a look at that, Horatio. I want to hear myself telling that old hyena where he gets off. Come on. <laughs> How do you feel now, huh? I feel high. Oh, boy, is that something. <laughs> Listen, Dick, has Klein seen those rushes yet? If he ever takes a squint at that, all our heads will drop in the basket. <laughs> Tennyson, where are you taking that film? Sure, and I'm burning it up. I have a wife and six kids. I'll get you a job for life if you run that the next time the client comes to the projection room. I can get you set tomorrow with Hofstangle for twice the dough. Well, I don't know. Here's a cash bonus. My lad, I'm beginning to think there's something stirring in that dynamic brain of yours. That's the file of Vance in you. Come, my lad. Uh, hello, Mr. Klein. Sure, this is Hannish speaking from projection room number A. Mike, why do you bother me in the middle of the day? The director didn't show up, Mr. Klein, so I'll be wanting an okay on the scenes we took yesterday. I also do the blackface act, my honor, child. Sure, right away, Mr. Klein. Thank you. Come on, Dick, let's go. I want to get a peek at that old buzzard while the show goes on. If I don't get a job soon, I won't have any shoes left. Can you imagine me looking for work in my bare feet? Her bare feet Stop. again? We fooled around I went through all this yesterday. Oh, well, I, uh, I guess there's some stuff following that you Everybody ought to see. Ten takes is enough, Kansas. This ain't an act in school. Get out. Outside, go on, outside. <laughs> oh, Your boat fight. You heartless fool. You don't give anyone a chance standing there criticizing and ridiculing. All of you looking on and daring someone to make good. Hearing, laughing behind our back. There's nothing decent or human about any of you. Stop it. Stop it. It's wonderful. It's magnificent. She's terrific. By Jiminy, I've discovered another Hepburn. He couldn't discover a hole in his bed. She's got everything. Voice, fire. I, 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 I've never seen such an acting. Hit me, Bob Preston. Quick. Oh, he's been fired. Uh, fired? Who fired him? Oh, well, uh, well, never mind. Where is he now? Well, he's in his office, packing. Packing? Listen, listen. Listen. Oh, Bob. <laughs> You're going for a little weekend trip somewhere? I have my pride. You fired me for the last time, Mr. Klein. <laughs> I fired you before for the last time. <laughs> oh, Bob, you take everything so serious. You got to remember, you know, sometimes I'm a little, uh, what do you call it, eccentric. There's another name for being eccentric, and they put people like that in a bug house. <laughs> you, you, you will have your little joke. <laughs> you can always make me laugh. <laughs> <coughs> you know, uh, yesterday, I guess I was a little angry. You know, all day my stomach ain't so good, but that dyspeptic uh, made me cross, and, uh, <laughs> well, I want, to I want to apologize to you, because I want to make it up to you. Tell you what I do. You send for that, uh, what, what's that girl friend of yours name? Uh, uh, Who uh, are you talking about? June Dale. You send for June Dale, and to show you my heart's in the right place, I sign it up for a long contract at $150 a week. <coughs> I say at $175 a week. Didn't you hear me say something? I heard say something, but it wasn't enough. 200 There's no use wasting time. Hofstangle's no piker. He'll pay real money. Hofstangle? 
Is that gratitude you sell me out to my worst competition? Of all the producers in town, you got to pick Hofstein. Bob, I didn't thought you'd do such a thing like that to me. Listen, Bob. Now, let's, let's be reasonable. How do you spell reasonable? Hmm? How do you spell reasonable? Oh, my. T-H-R-E-E-H-U-N-D-R-E-D. The wrong spelling. Listen, Bob, uh, we're old friends. Let's sit down and talk it over. Here you are, Bob. <clears throat> Have a perfecto. <laughs> now. Dry them tears, gal. The old homestead failed. I got the papers. You're now a contract player with featured billings for superb pictures at 500 smackers per week. Oh. Here it is in black and white, sealed with the Emperor's crest. Now watch our smoke, baby. A new star flashes across the heavens. June Dale. Bob, all this is very wonderful, but... What's that dark cloud on your unfair brow? Well, how about you, Mom? And you and me? And the open room? That'll have to wait a little while. Now relax, darling, and close those bright eyes of yours. Come on, close them. Now open your eyes and say, Oh, oh Bob! Bob. <laughs> Is it pretty? Oh, lovely. <laughs> That's to show you I really mean business. We'll have to work hard. I won't mind. As long as we're together. But I'll turn on that fertile press in imagination, and before I'm finished, they'll be naming streets after you. Lipsticks, powder, and even a good five cent cigar. Let's get going, baby. I want to crack that night edition. <laughs> Get just one more, oh, dropping the Bob, old... I'm so tired. All right, buddy, wrap it up. Okay, Bob. You tire out awfully fast lately whenever I want to put over a publicity stunt. Well, it's not just that, Bob. But if you'd look in your memo book, you'd see that we had a date this afternoon to go to the beach. Sure, I know, but... Oh, darling, we'll have such fun. We'll buy some weenies and find a quiet spot, light a fire and... Bob! Bob! Hey, what's the matter that you're here yet? You're going to be at the airport at we 2 o'clock. We were just about to barge out. Mr. Klein, what was that you said about an airport? Didn't he tell you? Why, Henry Brian arrives the new French star, bigger than Chevalier. <laughs> Relax, Mr. Klein, we'll be there on time. Well, never mind the poetry, you get down to the airport. <laughs> you had no intentions of taking me to the beach this afternoon, and you know it. But this is big, June. Every foreign paper will have it. Come on, honey, now, come on, don't get me. All right, Mr. Preston. Let's go, June. <laughs> Don't move. Hold it right where you are. All right, June. I extend you the greeting of the superb picture. We want you to feel that you have come to friends who will do everything to make your stay with us both enjoyable and memorable. Welcome to Hollywood. Ray! 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 My dear, thank you. 
You are my first impression of Hollywood, and I like it very much. And then you go to the Friday morning breakfast club. That's at 8 o'clock in the morning. 8 o'clock, my dear. I do not know Socho now. Uh... You get to know it very well. Okay, let's take it. All right. Bill, now on Tuesday, you go to the Pacific Golf Championship Tournament. Uh, but I do not play golf. Doesn't matter. You can wear knickers. No one will ever know the difference. At uh, what time does these uh, golf start? At 7 a.m. Mais ce n'est pas possible. When do you find time to leave in this mad place? You don't. Unless you can find a few minutes between work and publicity gag. People who can't take it shouldn't be in this game. And someone told me it was an art. Just one more, Harry, make it snappy. I have to make a publicity reel with Miss Dale and the heavyweight champ back at the studio. Look, the champ. How are you, champ? Yeah, it is the champ. Yourself. What a man. Hi, kid. You're pretty lucky to work in a picture with me. You know that, don't you? Champ, this is Mr. Oh, never mind. Everybody knows me. <laughs> what was that? Just the Indian love call. Oh, I thought it was something else. Come on, come on, let's go. I ain't got all day. I gotta write a story about all the dames that are nuts about me. Oh, so you're a Casanova. <laughs> oh, that guy. He's a pushover. I knocked him out and left him around last week. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready anytime you are, Champ. I want that back. Come on, let's go, baby, and don't pull your punches. That's the stuff, June. This is the honey. The public will eat this up. Movie star takes boxing lessons from champ. Fine, you hear me? Now, watch out. Watch yourself. Whoa! What is this, Paderewski? Where are you going? Well, you see, we were told to deliver this gun to this studio. Now, where do you want it? Oh, I don't want it. Suppose you ask over at the... Oh, get out of here, will you? Come on, Atlas, and pick up your feet. Hey, hey wait, wait, wait a minute. minute. Hey, what's the matter with you? Can't you see where you're going? Can we get on with this, please? Don't be in a rush, babe. I like your company. Okay, let's have the action. Camera. Cut. Now in the next one, Champ. You put your arm around the waist like that. Hey, I'm beginning to like this an awful lot. I got a good one. How about one of those punches where I'm giving you that clock table business? Hey. That's no way to treat a champ. Hmm? No. Hey, by the bell. <laughs> well, La Dale is certainly letting her hair down these days. <laughs> Maybe she'd like to play Tarzan. You're coming along, Joan. That was a great display of temperament. This has worked for me, too, you know. I can't figure out why you have any score coming. Don't talk to me like that, Bob. You've been mooning around for the last two weeks, giving me a bunch of dirty looks and acting like I was poison to you. What if I have? We can't go anyplace without someone yelling at me for pictures. I'm sick and tired of being mauled over, of being queen of the May and Finkel's diamond girl. Well, if it wasn't for all that, you'd be still playing bits. Every stunt I pulled meant more people went into the movies to see you. That's just it. I'm not June Dale, your sweetheart anymore. I'm just a bunch of headlines. Nothing more than a Bob Preston creation. Anything you've done for me has been a great big build-up for your own great talents as press agents. That's a cute way of putting it. That's all you've had in your mind, and you know it. No sense trying to kid ourselves. We've lost something, something that was really important to me. We'll never get it back. Maybe I have been a little rough on you. Oh, let's forget all this and go somewhere tonight, just you and me. I've heard that one before, Bob. I'm through. Come in. Oh, hello, Gordon. If you're busy, I'll turn right around and walk out. No, don't be silly. Come in. The Aritas bag at the Grove. How am I going tonight? And that, if my memory serves me, is the 21st time I've asked you. All right, Gordy. But I warn you, I won't be the life of the party. There's not going to be a party. Just you and me. 
I'd like that. Call for me at nine. All right. I'm sorry, but I have to get ready now. Of course. Nine o'clock. Think of a good place. Say, Stooge, where does this thing belong? Stooge? Say, who do you. Why, 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 uh, who are you, Stooge? Stop drizzling, will you? Where does this thing go? Get out of here. Go on. Get out of here. Get out, you loafers. What are you arguing with the guy for? Come on. Now listen, you better step on it, because I got lots of work to do. Come on now. Take it easy. Get the left. Out of boy, Atlas. Atta boy, atta boy. Hey, what are you trying to do, break the piano? It pushed me. It pushed you. It pushed you. I never saw the likes of it in my life. You know, you're getting away with murder. The only reason you got the job is because you're my wife's first husband. You? Well, I, uh... But you didn't have to divorce her, did you? Oh, Mr. Klein. Well, 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 what do you want? A hundred dollars on account. On account of what? On account of the fact I'm going to sell you a song. Say, are your, are your songs as good as your jokes? Oh, I just pulled this one out of the fire. Boy, this is hot. I call it, uh, Hush Your Fuss. Who gets this? <laughs> hush your fuss. Hush your fuss. Love and kisses were made for us. Say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you pull that out of the fire? Yes, well, sir. put it right back again. Hush your fuss. Hush your fuss. Go on. Hush your own fuss and get it. Go ahead. Pull out. Mr. Klein, please hear it all the way through. Say, girls, you want to hear my new song? I just sold it to Mr. Klein. He's crazy about it. No, thanks. Hey, boy, just a minute. Put that piano down here. I want to run through a number. Put it down, Atlas. Now, take it easy. Hold it a little to the left. Atta boy, don't look out now. Take it easy. That's Fine. Right. Now, let it down slow. Atta boy. Atta boy. How oh, you getting there? Slow. Take it easy. Little to the left. That's fine. Now you get it, Atlas. Open it up. Where's the key? Huh? Where is the key? Oh, the key. What am I looking for? The key. The key. Yeah, the key. I had a key when I... The key. I have to find out a key what I... I can't always... I have to... Yeah, I gotta find that. You let go of my hand, I want to find the key. You know anything about my hand? Open her up. Huh? Open her up. I, to, I, gotta, I gotta find out where...
This'll kill you. Johnny worked on a system, gave each sweetie a tell. And whenever he kissed them, if they hollered, he'd yell. You've got to listen to reason. The moon is shining above. That's the reason it's just the season for love. Perfect racket, haven't hit a single number tonight. <laughs> you must be lucky in love. You think so? I'm the unluckiest man in the world. I hitched my wagon to a star, but the old crate broke down. Oh, I get it. A beautiful lady gave you the ozone. Right you are, Mr. Bones, and right she was. I ruined her whole life. I forgot she was just a kid that wanted to have some fun. I broke her heart. I had it coming all right. Who's the other guy? Don't say that you're here. There's no other guy. I couldn't be. I'm the only menace. Don't you say anything about her. Joan Dale's on the level, you understand? Let's have another drink. And the villain still pursued it. And a very nice villain, too. June, I feel I ought to tell you why I've been so persistent the past few weeks. I've noticed that you haven't been as happy as a happily engaged girl ought to be. Is there anything wrong between you and Bob? We've quarreled. Is there anything other than a 
on these dice. No, there he is. Have a drink. Hello, big boy. Oh, hello. Oh, have you been drinking? Very happy to see all of you. They're the new generation of the motion picture great. Ah, I congratulate every single one of you. <laughs> I don't like this place. Oh, I ask you. Come on, Pop. Let's go someplace where we can dance. I don't want to dance. I want to sit down. Would you like to sit down, Pop? Yes, if you don't mind. Enjoy yourself. Come on, everybody. We're all going to love Bob. It's been my life's ambition to dance with you. If you do, it's only because I'm acting the part of a gentleman. Come on, let's have some fun. Let's travel, old pal. On the end again. I'll take the responsibility, and if I fail to make you happy, it won't be from lack of effort on my part. I know that. Well, it's merely a question of you making up your mind. Gordon, I'd like to think about it. I... I'm not quite sure. Oh, please understand. I don't want to hurt you. But you see, well, right now, even the way I feel about Bob, if he were to come back and, and tell me he's sorry and promise that things would be different, well, I don't know just what I'd do. Well, let's leave it this way for the time being. Of course, I'm not going to stop loving you or asking you to marry me. Did you see the oh, yes. mess of our game or something? Play follow the leader. <laughs> oh, boy, am I going to have a good time. I'll bite, are you? Can't we have a better table? I don't like this place. It ain't noisy. I think it's swell. Oh, let's have some drinks. Monsieur. Tell me, Bob, is it true? Is what true? A little bird in the studio restaurant this afternoon. Happened to see a rising young star, Jill, her handsome young lover. Let's not talk about that. Oh, don't be so downhearted. I know a girl who would appreciate some good publicity. Oh, it's publicity you want, huh? <laughs> well, I can give you a plenty. I can do anything with a headline. I can even break your heart. Whatever you did, I wouldn't treat you the way June has. Lay off the incense, Sheba. I know you. Jones, a hundred percent. Whatever she did, she did on the level. Well, I don't blame her. I think I'd throw you over for a couple of million dollars. What, what are you saying? There's the reason you got your closing notice. Get a picture of that, Bob. It'll make great publicity. Nice headlines, too. Money wins again. Or maybe it's just because you don't look well in a high hat. Must feel swell to have some other guy beat your time. Where are you going, Bob? Don't leave us. So Douglas is the reason for the big farewell scene, eh? Please, Bob, you're drunk. Sure I am drunk. That's the reason I see everything so clear. <laughs> You didn't have nerve enough to tell me you wanted to marry into Dow, did you? I think you've said enough, Preston. You're an ideal pair, and this is great. Yes, sir, it's a great yarn. Pasadena Playboy wins movie star. <laughs> You're a great little actress, all right. I really believe what you said this afternoon. Sure, and I was sap enough to fall for it. I taught you a lot, didn't I? There's no headlines of just marrying a guy like me, is there? Please, take me out of here. You're always running out on me, aren't you? Preston, that's enough. Wait a second, there's a lot more I want to say to you. Where's your telephone? I'm sober enough to know this is a great story. Getting ready to leave. He's on stage three. You, we've got to talk. There's nothing to say, Bob. 
Yes, there's so much. I've had you like a staff, and I'm sorry for it. Junior, got to listen to me. Sweet, we've meant too much to each other. You can't forget that. I'm going to marry Gordon. We're flying to Yuma this afternoon. You're not fooling me for a minute, June. You're not marrying him because you love him. It's to spite me. I'm marrying him for his money and for all the publicity I can get out of it. June, darling, please listen to me. I'm pleading with you to forgive me for anything I've said. You can't marry him. I, I love you too much. And you love me. There's, there's no sense kidding yourself about that. You can't run away and marry anybody just because we've had a battle. I don't love you anymore, Bob. Oh, June. Now, will you let me go? I won't let you go, do you hear? Please, Bob. June, I just want to ask you one question. And I know you'll answer me on the level. Do you love Gordon? Abby, dear. I want you to be sure you know that. Yes, I know that. And I am sure. Oh, here we are. I guess that's our plane over there. Oh, boy. Oh, Gordon. He's in the Hollywood Hospital. All right. Oh, hurry, hurry. Hollywood Hospital. Please tell him to hurry. I told you. And you can tell it to your grandchildren. You can do anything with a headline. Here you are, son. Take the rest of those papers and burn them. Come on, let's roll. I've got to get to the hospital before she does. I should have known he'd do something desperate. He's so stubborn. Hanson fixes up for me. Ran a special front page. Cost me 200 bucks, but it's worth a million. Genius, I calls it. Genius. <laughs> It's this coffee grinder. She might recognize it. I'm a sick man, doctor. Hurry up. Give me a room. Where do I go? What do I do? How do I know? I'm only the painter. Give me a room, quick. I'm sick. Why? Who's the doctor? What is it? I thought case of nervous exhaustion. I've got to have a room. Oh, quick! Ah. What room can we give him? Why, uh, 231. Right this way. In case anybody calls, my name is Bob Preston, and I'm a very, very sick man. You're right. How is he? He's a very sick man. No. Bob, darling. I love you, June. Oh, Bob, my sweet. There never was anyone but you. Kiss me, honey. I love you. I'll admit it was just a stall to get you back. I love you. I didn't want to see you do anything that you'd be sorry for. Please forgive me. I love you. We'll get married right away. We'll... I love you. Please give me a little smile to tell me that you're not angry. I love you. Bob, you're a madman. An absolute raving lunatic. But I love you. Uh -huh. What about this marriage business? I have it all fixed up, darling. I know just what you want. We're going to Ensenada. Moonlight. Soft breezes. Beautiful music, just you and me. Oh, Bob, 
I don't want one of these movie managers. Sweetheart, it's just going to be a quiet little wedding. Oh. should be a star the first time I ever saw her. And the first time you saw her, you fired her. <laughs> Can I help it if I'm a little bit eccentric? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 